Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 2, which I'm calling the Matrix Algebra portion of this playlist. And let me skip to the section that we're covering today, which is Operations on Matrices. Now, in order to do that, we need some notation, which is called the Summation and Product Notation. So, the sum of a sequence of numbers, say A1, A2, all the way up to an if we want to generically you know add those together we use this capital sigma notation where there's an index i and then we list what numbers the index goes from so one to n so this means that we start at a1 and we add it to a2 add it to a3 all the way add it to an and this is the sigma notation for summation. Now, if there's more than one index, say uh, double subscripts like a matrix, so if we have a two by three matrix, then the elements are designated by this double subscript. So A11, right, first row, first column. Um, A22 is the second row, second column. And if we want to add those up, then we need two sigma signs, two summation signs, and we need two indexes, i and j. And the elements are generically written as aij, and so the inner summation goes faster than the outer. So it starts at i equals 1, and then it goes j equals 1, j equals 2, j equals 3, and then we increment i to 2, and then with j equals 1, j equals 2, j equals 3. And then you can see that that's what we're doing here, and this is how you add when there's a double subscript. Now the product of a sequence of numbers is, is actually very similar, but the symbol we use is the capital pi. So there's an index and then it starts at you know equals you know the beginning to the end and it's the same. So it's a1 times a2 times a3 times all the way to a n. And that's the how you represent a product of numbers. And then we can also do this with the double subscripts that we just need two of these product notations. So two capital pi's. We need two indexes and this is it. And and the inner pi, you know, the inner product goes faster than the outer product. So it's i equals one and this j equals one, j equals two, j equals three. And then we increment the i to two and that's j one j2, j3, and you can see it's this product. Now how we do that in SAS, not SAS, R, is this. So if we assign a, a, these numbers to a vector A, which is here, and then if we have a matrix A that we've had in a previous video, in R, we just use the sum notation. So sum and little a, and it says sum every element in this vector, and it's 10. And the same way for sum of capital A. It says sum every element in that matrix, and we get 12. But sum is a really versatile thing. It just, you know, whatever you send it, it tries to add it. So here, capital A, one comma blank. This says add the first row. I mean, grab the first row of A and then sum it. Add it to the, the sum of the second row. So it's, it's summing these two rows and it's six, but it's very versatile. So one colon two, that means create a vector. It's a sequence of numbers from one to two, I'm, right? And then so that, but it, it's capital A. So this says we want the first two rows of A, all the columns, sum it. It's actually what we just did up here. This should be the same, right? Here we just created a smaller matrix that has two rows and three columns. Here we just grabbed a row in, in the second row. But they, they're the same, six. Now here the diag of A just looks at the diagonal elements of A and then adds them. And actually later we're going to learn that this is called the trace. When you add the diagonal elements of a, of a matrix, it's called the trace. Now. The product of A just means you multiply all the elements in that vector together, and it's 672. Same way with prod of capital A. It says multiply every 
element in that matrix together, and it's 846,702. Now, this is kind of the product of this vector. Remember, 1 colon 2 says create a vector in sequential numbers. So this creates a vector with components 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But then if we take the product of it, that's really just 5 factorial, right? 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. It's, it's, a, it's a quick and dirty way to, to do a factorial. It's not as efficient as the built-in function, but it's definitely something that is doable. Now, let's add and subtract matrices. Now, to add and subtract matrices, you first have to have two matrices of the same dimension. So capital, you know, the matrix A has to be N by P, and matrix B also has to be N by P, because what you do is you, el you add them element-wise. The, you know, the, the 1, 1 element here is added to the 1, 1 element here, and then that is stored in the 1, 1 element of C. And you do that for a, each uh, element in these matrices. And mathematically, it looks like this. Cij, which is an element of the matrix C, is equal to Aij plus or minus Bij. So it, it add the corresponding elements in these matrices for this. Uh, matrix addition is commutative. You know, you can A plus B is the same as B plus A. Uh, the transpose of the sum is the, the sum of the transposes, which is this. Now, I like to think it like this, and this will actually make more sense in later videos, the way I think about it like this. If you take that transpose into the B and then into the A, you get this. Right? And so this, this relationship holds. Now let's look at a few of these in R. So we have a matrix A and we have a matrix B. They're both three by three, so we can add them together. So A plus B is this matrix, and you add elements. So three plus one is four. Minus two plus six is four. So you add element by element. And notice that if we go B plus A, it's the same matrix. And this is the transpose. So if we take the transpose of A minus the transpose of B, we get this matrix back. But we could go A minus B and then take the transpose and notice it's the same matrix. Okay, so we're going to do multiplication. Oh, this is a scalar times a matrix. And what that means, notice this C is not bold in this lowercase, so it's a number. And when you take a, a, a scalar times a matrix, you take it times every element in there. And that's what this mathematically says, that the elements of this product is C times the original element in the matrix, Aij, and this is for all Ij. So two times this matrix, you take two times every element and you get this. Now, to do that in R, you have a matrix A, and you just take it two times A, and then it takes it times every element. Now, the product of two matrices is this. So first of all, you have to have what's called conformable matrices. And, and this is it. So if we take matrix A times matrix B, what it means to conform is these inner numbers. So the number of columns here have to equal the number of rows here. So notice it's P. Now N and M do not have to equal, only these, these numbers. And it's defined like this. Now notice that the index is K but we have i, j, and k. So the index i and j are fixed in this sum. So k goes from 1 to p, and it's p because that's the uh, dimension right here. Now let's look at this. What this says mathematically, and really you should write this out for this example, you know, expand it and show what it does. So we take row 1 times column 1. So you, you think of it, I think of it as taking this row and kind of standing it up to make it a column, and then it's paired. So 2 times 1, and then two, 1 times 2, 
and then 3 times 3, that's this. And then you add and multiply that, and you get 13. And then you go first row times a second column. Remember, you think of it, you can either think of like taking this column and making it kind of a row so they match up. So it's 2 times 4, 1 times 6, 3 times 8, and then you add them together, and that's 38. And then you go to the second row, first column. You know, think of it as like standing this up. So it's 4 times 1 plus 6 times 2 plus 5 times 3. And that's what this is, and that's 31. Uh, second row, second column, same way. 4 times 4, 6 times 6, 5 times 8. Add them, you get this. Now, the easy way to think about this is the answer. So... This is a 2 by 3 matrix, and this is a 3 by 2. So it's whatever the outer numbers are, three, uh, 2 by 3, 3 by 2. So this, the result is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. And notice that this number is the first row, first column. So, so to get that, you take the first row, first column, and do this, and you get that. This one here is the first row, second column. So you take the first row times the second column, and it goes here. This entry here is the second row, first column. So you take the second row times the first column, and you get that. And this is the second row, second column. Now, to do this in R, I'm going to show you. So these, uh, so we have a matrix A, and notice that it's 2 by 3. And this one is 3 by 2. So if we take the first row of A times the first column of B, we get 13. And we do this, the, the thing is, so first row times first column, so it's 2 times 1, 1 times 2, 3 times 3, and you get 13. First row times the second column, you get 38 and so forth. A, second row of A times the first column, you get 31, and you get 92. And notice that if you just generically say A times B, and this is the symbol for matrix multiplication. A times B, you get 13, 38, and 92, which is, are exactly the numbers that we got up here. Notice that this is a 2 by 2 matrix, right? This is 2 by 3, 3 by 2. So the outer numbers are 2 by 2, and that's the result. Now notice here, this is a 3 by 2 and a 2 by 3. So the 2s the match up, so we can multiply this, but the result is a 3 by 3 matrix, and that's what this is. Now, the last set of properties, we're kind of, we're not going to prove them, but we'll in, I'll show you how to show these results hold for at least a special a couple special cases in R and we're going to use every one of these properties so if you look at this video and you go whoa we're never going to use that you're absolutely wrong we're going to use every one of these properties and so a squared is the same as a times a and it and it's really only defined for square matrices because the dimensions have to work out. In general, A times B is not equal to B times A, and we showed that in the R example above. Matrices, you can left distribute the, the matrix A, so you can do B plus C, and then take A times it, or you can distribute the A and go A times B plus A times C, and you can also right distribute it in here. And now, all these have to be conforming matrices. This, the, uh, the product of these, you think of it as the FOIL. So A times C minus B times C, A times D minus, and then minus a minus B, D, B, D. The transpose of the product of matrices, when you take that transpose in, it reverses the order. Now, when it's addition, it just goes straight in, but on multiplication that reverses it. Uh, on A times B times C transpose, when you take that transpose in, it reverses the order. The identity matrix times A, you just get A. And then we'll, we'll look at a few examples just to illustrate that these 
results do hold. We have matrix A, matrix B, matrix C. So notice that if we take A times B plus C, we get this matrix. But then if you just left distribute that A matrix in, you get A times B plus A times C. It's the same matrix, so that property does hold, at least for in this case. And it's the same way for right multiplication. So we can, we can first add B and C and then multiply A, and you get this. Or you can write distribute A into each of those, and you get the same matrix. Uh, the transpose of yeah, A times B transpose is this. But then remember, you have to reverse the order. So it's the transpose of B times the transpose of A, and you get the same number. Diag of 2 is the identity matrix times A, right? This is a 2 by 2 matrix. A is a 2 by 3. So the result is going to be a 2 by 3 matrix, which is A. Um, a is a 2 by 3. And this is the diag 3. So that's the identity matrix, a 3 by 3 matrix. So it's going to be a 2 by 3, but it's going to be A back, which is this. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I have for this video. It ran a little bit long. I want to try to keep them 10 minutes or shorter. I'll do that in future videos. Hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thank you. Bye.